you. En solidaridad. Mm. Are you ready? Thank you. We're going to begin our program with Father Richard Estrada from Our Lady of Queen of Angels Church. Thank you. Father, give us your name again. Good morning. My name is Father Richard Estrada, Estrada from La Placita Parish in Los Angeles. Ya es hora nuestras familias unidas. The time is now. Keep families united. That's why we are here. We were promised in January that they, there would be a new immigration law, a just one, for everyone. But every week, there is a thousand, at least a thousand families or a thousand children, at least a thousand children, separated from their families. That is injustice. And we're here today to say we need, we want, and we are working for justice and for mercy for all people, especially immigrants in this country. Ahora, estamos aquí porque nos prometieron Nuestras, nuestros políticos, líderes de, del país, que iba a haber una reforma. Ya estamos en abril casi, y no hay nada. Oímos, pero que están trabajando en una reforma. Pero cada semana hay más de mil niños y familias separadas. Para nosotros esta es una injusticia. So, venimos, yo vengo representando una institución que apoya a todos los inmigrantes. Tenemos un nuevo Papa. La primera cosa que él dijo, apoyen a los marginados, a los pobres. Y para nosotros los inmigrantes necesitan nuestro apoyo. So, queremos misericordia, queremos justicia, y por eso estamos aquí. Buenos días, mi nombre es Marta Arevalo, yo soy la directora ejecutiva de CARECEN, Centro de Recursos Centroamericanos, y estamos aquí... Una delegación acaba de salir de pedirle a la senadora Feinstein, le presentaron una carta firmada por muchas organizaciones que estamos trabajando en este esfuerzo de una reforma justa y humana que se enfoque en mantener a las familias juntas. La senadora Feinstein tiene que salir públicamente a apoyar nuestro esfuerzo. No es suficiente de que sus de que su equipo, de que su staff nos diga que sí va a apoyar una reforma migratoria. Ella tiene que salir públicamente, asegurarse que está representando a la gente de California de una manera correcta. Ella tiene que salir públicamente para decirte que está apoyando el esfuerzo para mantener a las familias justas. Ella tiene que salir públicamente para decir alto a las exportaciones que está separando a miles y miles de familias. Ella tiene que usar su liderazgo en el Senado y en Washington, D.C., para asegurar de que los derechos del emigrante sean respetados, la gente de su estado. Es muy importante también de que ella use su liderazgo a asegurar de que una propuesta justa de la reforma migratoria se presente lo más pronto posible. Primero nos dijeron que en, en febrero, después nos dijeron que en marzo, ahora nos están diciendo que hasta abril, pero nosotros no vamos a parar y vamos a seguir trabajando para asegurarnos que salga una propuesta. Hasta ahorita solo oímos rumores, nadie ha tomado el liderazgo, a él le toca ese papel. Senadora Feinstein, por favor, sea nuestra voz, sea nuestra campeona, trabaje por las familias de su estado. Good morning, my name is Marta Arevalo, I'm the Executive Director of CARES in the Central American Resource Center. And we are here today because a delegation just came down from presenting Senator Feinstein 
a letter signed by many organizations who are working for fair and just immigration reform that focuses on keeping families together. It's important that it's not enough for her staff to tell us that she's going to support yes, yes. immigration reform. It's important that Senator Feinstein come up publicly in support of fair immigration reform. It's critical that she use her leadership in Washington, D.C. to stop the deportation that are separating so many families, thousands and millions of families every day. It's critical that she stand up for the people in her state, the people that she represents. It's important that she listen to the people that vote for her to make sure that our, what we want for immigration reform, that, it, that she's listening to. It's important that she support immigration reform, that it's fair and just, that she support immigration reform, that gives a road to citizenship for so many families so they're no longer separated. Temporary programs that have been in existence for 12, 14 years are not temporary. Every 18 months, every two years, people have to wonder if their program is going to be renewed. It's important that those people have permanent residency and a path to citizenship. She is a leader within the Senate. She needs to speak up. She needs to stand up for families. It's important that she use her seniority and her, and her power and anything she has, her team, her resources, to push for fair immigration reform that is fair and just and that focuses on families. She needs to respond. It's important that she come up publicly. We hope that she also pushes to make sure that we have a proposal on the table that is presented in the Senate. We were told that something was gonna be presented in February, then we were told something was gonna be presented in March. Now we're here in April, but we're not going to stop until somebody takes the leadership and presents a proposal that is fair and just for families. Thank you. We need her name again and a spelling of her name. Martha Arevalo. Come a up to the mics. That mic doesn't matter. Martha Arevalo, A-R-E-V-A-L-O, Carecen. And your title? Executive Director of Carecen, the Central American Resource Center. Uh, did you say that again? Your name? Your name? Martha Arevalo. Thank you. So um, I just want to mention 1,100 families are separated every day. And so I'm going to ask all the families that are here to please come forward. Todos los familias, familia, por favor, háganse adelante. Please, come on over. And we're going to hear from three families. First, we're going to hear from Iran Mahmoud from APOC, then Evelyn Hernandez with Cares, and, and then Kevin Lee with the Korean Rice Worker Center. So if you're representing a family, we need you to come up here. All the family members, Kevin, folks from KRC. And that's what these shoes represent. A shoe without a pair. That's what family separation means to our families. Thank you, and Maureen. Hi, my name is Mira Memo. Uh, I work for the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. I'm a staff attorney here. Um, I'm here today to speak out in support of just and fair comprehensive immigration reform. I'm here to urge Senator Feinstein to protect the sibling and adult children preference categories as well as, which are currently in jeopardy, as well as to clear the visa backlogs. Um, I'm here not just to represent my clients, many of whom are immigrants who have been separated from their families for years, but to talk about my own experience as an immigrant from Pakistan. My uncle sponsored my family, as well as my aunt and her family, to come to the United States. Not only having the sibling category not only enabled my uncle to be reunited with his sisters after decades of separation, but allowed this country to gain two wonderful women, my mother and my aunt, who are teachers who have taught countless Americans to be better people um, and better students. However, due to the visa backlog, my, my family waited for over a decade to get our green cards. Due to the backlog, my sister aged out of her, peti her petition and was not able to join me and my family when we moved here in 1996. <laughs> when my mother became a U.S. citizen, she sponsored my sister Maria to come here. She sponsored her three years ago, but in, in that time, the visa backlog has increased and her wait time has gone up from eight years to 11 years. She's been waiting since 1986 be able to come here and when the situation in Pakistan has deteriorated she has been lost out on the opportunity to live here, to work here, to provide her children with a better environment. I myself have
been separated from my sister. I've not been able to watch my nephews and my niece grow up. It's, a, it's an issue that affects us personally. We're not able to celebrate our happy moments together, uh, to support one another in sad moments, and just to be there for one another, to hold and love and hug one another. And it is a very sad situation. And so I urge Senator Lankin to not only keep the adult and adult children that serve in categories intact, but to carry the visa backlog so that families such as mine are reunited. Miss, could you give us your name and spell it? I think I need mics here. Uh, my name is Mira Menud. It's spelled M-E-E-R-A-N, last name M-A-H-M-U-D, and I'm from the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. Thank you. Muy buenos días. Mi nombre es Evelyn Hernandez. Soy salvadoreña. Soy parte de Carecen. Estamos aquí. Estoy con mi hijo, estamos aquí porque estamos pidiendo a la senadora Feinstein que apoye una reforma justa que incluya a la comunidad de TPS, ya que yo tengo TPS por 12 años, tengo 20 años de vivir en este país, hemos pagado nuestros impuestos y también quiero recordarle a la senadora Feinstein que nosotros tenemos hijos ciudadanos, Los hijos ciudad mis tres hijos ciudadanos en las próximas elecciones ellos van a votar. Y el impacto, que nuestra, el impacto que nuestra comunidad va a ser latina, porque mis hijos no van a ser los únicos ciudadanos que van a salir a votar. Van a haber muchos que van a salir a votar. Así es que le hago un llamado a la senadora Feinstein que nos ayude en esta reforma migratoria, que tome el liderazgo del Senado, del Congreso y que nos ayude con una reforma justa, que nosotros nos lo merecemos. Gracias. Just a quick translation. This is Evelyn Hernandez. She's been in the country for 20 years, and she's here with her son. She's had temporary protective status, TPS, for over 12 years. And she wants to tell Senator Feinstein that we need an immigration reform that includes all families, including those who hold TPS. She also has sons, three sons, who in four years, all of them will be able to vote. And so we want to remind them, all the elected officials, that our community votes and is going to be out there and voting and they need to pass immigration reform now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin Lee. Um, I'm an immigrant rights organizer at the Korean Resource Center and I'm also a dreamer. My family immigrated to the United States in 1999 in order to pursue the American dream that so many other Americans in the past have um, aspired for, and even aspire for even now. And this past year, I obtained deferred action for childhood arrivals. Receiving a work permit enabled me to finally get a driver's license and also find employment. While I am relieved that I can finally drive, work, and feel protected from deportation, I am deeply saddened that my parents remain in the shadows, unprotected. It is not enough that young people similar to me have temporary relief. People like my parents, they're, they're not criminals. They simply work for their children and their family. It is sad that at this very moment, I could get a call saying my parents will be in deportation proceedings. And as of now, so many people are going through the pains of family separation. Many people like my parents, they want to contribute and be a part of this society, but they are pushed to the periphery, shamed and blamed. Most of the time, our parents attempt to be a part of the legal process, but the broken immigration system simply did not allow them. And as of today, I, haven't, I, have, I was unable to see my um, grandmother, my sick grandmother, in, back in South Korea for 13 years. And um, if you think about it, the values of family and hard work, they're something fundamentally American. Now there are talks of um, reducing family visas greatly. I know, I personally know people that will be affected by the issue. The question I want to ask Senator Feinstein and other policymakers is, would it not make most sense both economically and morally in the long term to have united, stable, and contributing families in the United States? Right? forever? Yes. Deferred action for childhood arrivals has tremendously affected the lives of many dreamers. 
However, we must pursue a comprehensive immigration plan that is inclusive, humane, and includes family unity for all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Betty Hung. I am the policy director at the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. California has more immigrants than any other state in the country. We call on Senator Feinstein to be a champion for her constituents, to be a champion for our immigrant families. In the November 2012 election, 73% of Asian Americans voted for President Obama. In exit polling that we conducted at the Asian Pacific American Legal Center, we found that 82% of Asian American voters in California said that immigration played an important role in how they viewed the presidential candidates. The Asian American electorate also doubled from 2008 to 2012 and like the Latino community and Latino voters will continue to grow. And so it is as immigrant voters that we come here today to demand that Senator Feinstein be a champion for our communities and for all immigrant families. Our immigration system is predicated upon family unity. It was not until 1965 that restrictions on immigration from Asia were lifted, notably during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. And since then, a majority of Asian American immigrants have come to the United States through the family immigration process. 40% of the family immigration visas are also sponsored by Latinos. But today, the family immigration system is in serious need of fixes. We have extreme backlogs of as long as 23 years that cause families to be separated across oceans, across lands, unable to be with one another. For Mexico, that is about 20 years. which is negotiating an immigration reform bill, is considering dismantling our family immigration system, which would have a devastating impact on Latinos, on Asians, and on women. 60% of women come to the United States through family visas. Yet, Republican senators are proposing to eliminate the brother-sister category and the adult married children category. They are trying to misguide and mislead the public into thinking that it is a, 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 an issue of family-based immigration versus employment-based immigration. It is not and should not be a zero-sum game. What we need is an increase in both family visas and employment visas to strengthen our U.S. society and economy. Asking us to trade away certain family members is contrary to our nation's core values. Family immigration is critical to our communities. Having the support networks where we help each other to take care of children, to find jobs, to start businesses. My family came here from Taiwan and it was through the family immigration system that my parents were able to sponsor their parents, their brothers, their sisters. I remember after school going to my grandma's house while my parents were working. We also took care of our grandparents as they were getting older and ill. It is these support networks that are so critical to our immigrant families. Moreover, family immigration has a positive economic impact over 200 of the Fortune 500 companies were founded by immigrants for their kids. And for high-skilled uh, entrepreneurs or high-skilled workers, it is more of an incentive for them to stay in the U.S. if their families can be here too. 
So we are here today with a letter to Senator Feinstein signed by 91 organizations, including labor, civil rights, legal groups, and faith groups, calling on her to be a champion for immigrant families and for family, a path to citizenship, as well as family reunification. Yesterday, seven senators, including California Senator Barbara Boxer, sent a letter to the Gang of Eight calling on them to remember women and families. Senator Feinstein did not sign that letter. We call on her to, to stand up with our families and to sign the letter that her colleagues have circulated because ultimately our children at any age are our family and our brothers and sisters are our family. So please, Senator Feinstein, stand up with us and keep our families together. My name is Silmara Corpeño and I'm the director of organizing with Chirla. Right now, elected officials from all over the country are heading back to their districts to hear back from their constituents about what are the most important issues. Immigration reform is not a new issue. We have been here for years. Senator Feinstein knows better. So if she doesn't want to listen, we're going to make her listen. So starting today, we already sent in a delegation, but tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and every day that she does not come out in a public event so with family stating her support for immigration reform and family unity, we are going to be where she is going to be. We're going to be visiting her office every day. We're going to be calling her office every day. We're going to get California voters to continue calling her office. And we're going to we're going to give her till April 8th to answer. And if not on April 10th, then she's going to get a surprise. So, we as a large coalition here, we have SEIU, USWW, we have Korean Resource Center, Pacific American Legal Center. and our partners on April 10th if she does not heed our call. But we will be here every day with families because she pretends not to know. On February 13th at the Senate Judiciary hearing, she spoke out against family, the family-based system. She needs to hear that that's the wrong message. She needs to get on board and we're gonna hear, be here to keep her accountable. So I wanna say thank you to everybody for joining us. We have families who are available for one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews and we will be having, I believe, another delegation heading up to go and see her th today. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> 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 